Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Dr. Sandhya Yadav, final year postgraduate resident, GMCH Guwahati. I am here to present a case report on severe dry eye associated with toxic epidermal necrolysis. There is no financial disclosure. Introduction. Toxic epidermal necrolysis is a rare but severe mucocutaneous drug reaction affecting more than 30% body surface area with a high fatality rate. Severe cicatrizing ocular surface disease is one of the most significant and debilitating sequelae of Stevens Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. Uh, in emergency department, there was an 18-year-old girl who presented with painful generalized erythematous vesicopullus rashes with sloughing of skin initially started from tongue, which then spread all over her body, including her genitals, as well as oral cavity since three days. There was a history of fever, cough, anorexia since three days. She developed diminution of vision, both eye, which was associated with mucopurlin discharge, foreign body sensation, and redness since two days. There was no history of excessive watering, ocular pain, chronic history of topical ophthalmic medications, and use of contact lens. There was a history of generalized seizure for which patient was taking tab lamotrigine 50 mg twice daily since 15 days. And this was, supposed, uh, this was found to be the offend offending drug in this case and patient was admitted under dermatology department where supportive treatment was done and patient was uh, started with IV steroids. Uh, this we can see uh, for day one, patient presented with sloughed eyelid skin with crusting and mucopurlin discharge. On bedside ocular examination, uh, right eye visual acuity was hand movement close to face, while left eye it was normal at bedside. Uh, there was crusting of skin over the eyelid. Uh, two third margin of the lid was involved in right eye, whereas one third lid margin was involved for left eye. Both the puncta were plugged with discharge. Both the conjunctiva were hyperemic with mucopurlin discharge in the fornix with pseudomembrane formation. Cornea diffuse epithelial defect in interpalpebral area with uh, intake corneal sensation in right eye, while there were few punctate epithelial defect in left eye. Rest was normal. Uh, this we can see on the first picture, there was hazy cornea with uh, pseudomembrane formation. As per Gregory's grading, our case fall in severe ocular manifestation of 10, where there was more than one third lean margin was involved. Uh, there was a uh, whole of the cornea of right side was involved and conjunctiva there was stain positive more than one centimeter. Initially medical management was done, saline flush both eye with debridement of pseudomembrane using blunt tip cotton applicator was done. Uh, for medical management, moxifloxacin eye drop 0.5% was started for both eyes six times daily. Uh, preservative free tear substitute was uh, used one hourly and antibiotic steroid eye, eye ointment was applied four times daily in both lid margin. But due to deteriorating general condition of the patient, amniotic membrane grafting was postponed and temporary BCL was done for right eye. On day 15, uh, there was not much improvement noted for right eye, while left cornea was clear with persistent conjunctival injection. Sermer test one for right eye was five millimeter in 15 minutes, while for left eye it was 15 millimeter in three minutes. Amniotic graf uh, membrane grafting was done for right eye to encourage the rapid epithelial healing and to reduce the inflammation and scarring in the ocular surface. This is amniotic uh, dry, uh, membrane grafting for right eye where we used dry amniotic membrane. It was sutured covering all of the cornea, conjunctiva, both the superior as well as inferior fornix and lid margin. On follow-up, uh, patient uh, right eye vision with aid, it was improved to 6-9 and for left eye it was 6-6. Six, six. Shermer test gradually improved uh, from 10 millimeter in five minutes for right eye while for left eye it was normal. Uh, tear breakup time was 10 seconds for right eye, left eye was 15 seconds. Tear meniscus height was 0.5 millimeter, and there was clear cornea on fluorescent stain. Day 30, there was healed corneal epithelial defect. Day 45, there was reduction of uh, inflammation and improved visual acuity. Discussion in our case, present, uh, patient presented with pseudomembranous conjunctivitis and corneal epithelial defect in acute stage and gradually developed severe dry eye in subacute stage. All patients with eyelid margin involvement, pseudomembrane anor corneal and conjunctival epithelial defect should receive amniotic membrane within four to seven days. 
Use of cryopreserved amniotic membrane can significantly reduce deuce level 3 to deuce level 1 and can also improve the tear breakup time as seen in our case. Visual acuity of the patient improved drastically. Conclusion, there are a number of windows of opportunity in the treatment of SJSR 10 that if passed up lead to irreversible ocular damage with the accompanying discomfort and loss of vision. Thank you.